Yesterday, President Trump held a surprise press conference <laughs> with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, uh, which is kind of the worst surprise ever, right? It's a surprise, I brought Mitch McConnell. Boo! It's like, so what kind of a surprise party has Mitch McConnell? Not kill yourself. And now, all of this is happening. All of this is happening because Donald Trump's presidency has resulted in no major legislative accomplishments, right? And part of it is because people think Trump and the Senate don't get along, right? Which is true, but they don't want people knowing that. Which is why Trump and Mitch came out to say that they're not just colleagues. They've been best BFFs forever. Contrary to what some of you may have reported, uh, we're together Totally. We've been friends and acquaintances for a long time. We are probably now, despite what we read, we're probably now, I think, at least as far as I'm concerned, closer than ever before. My relationship with this gentleman is outstanding, has been outstanding. I don't know. Something's fishy here. They sound less like real friends and more like Trump's trying to get Mitch a green card. You know, this, this gentleman, I'm gonna say Mitch. Mitch, right? Yeah. Mr. Immigration Officer, this relationship is special. It's so special. That's what you said about Melania. Okay, I'll admit that was a scam, but this one is real. This one is real. It's funny watching these two try and sell us their romance, you know? It's like, who are they trying to convince? Because all you have to do is compare yesterday to every other thing that they've said. There have been a number of stories in the last couple of weeks saying that Mitch McConnell and President Trump basically hate each other. I'm very disappointed in Mitch McConnell. Uh, it says privately that he is uncertain that Trump will be able to salvage his presidency. In a series of tweets this month, Mr. Trump criticized Mr. McConnell publicly and then berated him in a phone call that quickly devolved into a profane shouting match. Okay, okay, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that back. Actually, that does sound like real love. That's, yeah, isn't that love? Every phone call devolves into a profane shouting match. That's love, that is love. We're just a few weeks away from hearing that Trump was throwing all Mitch's stuff out of his Senate office window. Mitch is just there like, stop it, Donald, you're being ridiculous. I loved you, Mitch. You broke my heart, Mitch. Put a shirt on, goddammit. You're embarrassing the neighborhood. This is me, Mitch. Accept me for my body, Mitch. You gotta accept me. You never loved me, Mitch. Donald, please, everybody's watching. Come on. Nobody cares, Mitch. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody. So, so the goal of the press conference uh, was to make everyone forget about all of that stuff, right? Uh, and Trump, he did accomplish that. He did a good job. Uh, he made people forget the same way he usually makes people forget about any issue, by creating an entirely new issue, right? <laughs> when a reporter asked him this question. Why haven't we heard anything from you so far about the soldiers that were killed in Niger, and what do you have to say about uh, that? I've written you? them personal letters. Uh, they been sent or they're going out tonight, but they were written during the weekend. Uh, I will, at some point during the, the period of time, call the parents and uh, the families, because I have done that traditionally. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what's worse. The fact that President Trump said nothing after four American soldiers were killed in Niger, or the fact that his first public statement about it was basically, the dog ate my homework. Like, I wish Trump just came out and told the truth. Just be like, yo, Trump, why didn't you call? Why didn't you say something? Just be like, you know why I said nothing? Because after saying Nambia, I was afraid to mispronounce Niger, okay? <laughs> That's the truth. Hashtag woke. <laughs> but instead, instead of just admitting fault, he somehow found a way to make this about Obama. The traditional way, if you look at uh, President Obama and other presidents, most of them uh, didn't make calls. A lot of them didn't make calls. I like to call when it's appropriate, when I think I'm able to do it. Earlier you said that President Obama never called the families of fallen soldiers. How can you make that claim? I don't know if he did. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, was, I was told that he didn't often, and a lot of presidents don't. They write letters. I do, excuse me, Peter. I do a combination of both. I like when I can, the combination of a call and also a letter. Wow, okay. I don't know if you noticed what he just did there. See what he said? 
President Obama never called. I call and I write. I also haven't called and I didn't write. But I do, except when I don't, which is now. Pretty much now, yeah. I deserve credit. Oh, get out, go. What are you doing here? Get out of here. Sorry, the locals. I, uh, I feel really bad for Mitch McConnell, man. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, because this day was supposed to be about showing off unity, right? Instead, the Trump train derailed what was supposed to be a simple photo opportunity. And I don't know why Republicans insist on letting Donald Trump speak. They should just stage relationship paparazzi pictures. That's all you need? Yeah, they should do it like, you know, I can see it now, like a, a Trump and McConnell sharing a milkshake. <laughs> People are like, wow, could this be tax reform? Who knows?